Hey, yo, what's up, guys? CG is back live. We're about to break in some Fort Anders update news. So I will give you guys some discussions after my intro. I'm going to hit that shit right now. This is CG Ruthless Sports. I will be brutally honest. Ain't nothing but being brutally honest. Coming at you with another video. What's up, guys? CG is back in the motherfucking building. The grind never stops. So what's up, everybody? I'm back in the building. So let's talk about this recent topic news, all right? So uh, free agent edge rusher, who was a former Indianapolis coach, uh, Kami uh, Kamako Ture, visit the 49ers. I don't know how you pronounce his name, but... The point is uh, he's visiting the 49ers, so it definitely does give us possibility that we're going to add edge rush depth right there. But the question is, so if we were to sign him, does it really change the plans of us drafting edge rushers? Maybe, maybe. But any of you faithfuls in the comments or anybody coming by, let me know what you guys think. Kamito Turi is an intriguing guy. So he was originally drafted by the Indianapolis Colts. I think he was a third round draft pick from Rutgers. I believe the upside was kind of uh, intriguing. I think in a limited playing time snap that he played, I think he had about nine. I mean, what is it? Five and a half sacks last season, but I think he only had nine tackles. So I think he was a limited, like I think he only played in rotations and barely did anything out there, or maybe he was injured. But the point is if we sign this guy, do you guys feel like the edge rush uh, depth is good enough? Because if you look at it this way, okay, speaking as a as a person, speaking as a fan, so we definitely brought in Kerry Hyder, Jordan Willis, you, and if you sign this guy, it fills the depth. Like, let, let, let's think about it. D four is going to retire at some point. We're going to move on from him, so that does give you other depth pieces. I mean, you got what's his name, Charles Amenahu. That's another guy we just developed. Um, Jordan Willis, we're developing. We brought him back. I mean, Nick Bosa, when healthy, he's one of the best edge rushers we got right now. So when you look at our depth chart, okay, let's look at the depth chart. Let's be realistic about it. So Nick Bosa is, is definitely our starter, without a doubt. So you look at it that way. And then you got other guys, Samson Ebicon. That's another guy. That's definitely another guy we have. Hey, what's up, Corey Davis? Appreciate you on the comment section, my dude. But when you look at the dead pieces, Samson, uh, Samson Ebb becomes another guy. Jordan Willis, Harry Hyder, and then if you just don't include D Ford, but then you got uh, what's his name, Charles Amenahu. That's five. That's five guys. So if we were to sign this guy. That's six edge rushers right now. So when you look at it that way, does it really change our strategy? Does it really change our strategy if we were to sign them? Like personally, if we were to sign them, does that really change the plans of how we approach in the draft? I think in the long term, we're going to probably want to draft somebody, but does it change the way we want to go into the draft? I still think we might get one late round, maybe so, but you develop them. But let's say if we do sign him, like, do you guys think we should sign him? Personally, should we sign him or not? You know, that's the question. I mean, I see some upside. He got potential. I heard of his name, but I can't pronounce it right. So it's like Komoto, Komoko Tari or whatever. I don't know how you say his name. But he seems intriguing. He was a guy that was coming off of Rutgers. So seems like an upside guy, if I had to be honest. But what is it? What is it with the possibility? I mean, he's already visiting. 
I like that we're definitely considering to add some depth pieces because depth pieces is more important for our team because injuries do play a factor. So even if we do sign them, I feel confident with our depth chart. I feel confident enough to where, you know what, we don't need to draft some guys at this point. Maybe we can get one late round undrafted maybe and you develop them. Just saying, you know, it's just you think of the way how the teams approach, man. So the question is, if we were to sign him, how much money do you think this guy's asking for? I mean, he's got potential. His upside's kind of better. I mean, he's got five and a half sacks. I think that was the season best last year. His career best was five and a half sacks with the Colts. So I, I'm surprised that no other team is taking a flyer out of him. I don't think his market value is very high like everybody think it was. I mean, you could take a flyer on him. Like, I like the idea. You know, you got Samson Ebicom. You got Jordan Willis, who are speed rushers. You got Charles Amedehu. Nick Bosa is our starter. But then you got other guys that we already got. Kerry Hyder, who just hustles and plays the position right. I feel like if we sign this guy, it gives us quality dip. What team did he play for? The Indianapolis Colts. He was recently with the Colts. He was a third-round draft pick from Rutgers, I believe 2018 draft pick. So looking into um, looking into what he did for the Colts, I think he's only registered nine tackles, five and a half sacks. But it was mostly as a rotation guy. So I think he was in the rotation. He was on special teams. I don't know how many games he played, but as far as his snaps, it, you can tell he was mostly a rotation guy. So he might not be too bad of a rotation guy to get. So, yeah, I don't know. Colts had some solid pass rushers, and some of them kind of hit the free agency too. I do like how we're looking at the, the, the way we look at free agency. We are definitely going under the radar. So I think with Chris Kacarek, you're definitely going to develop somebody like him. The upside is up the roof. Maybe you get this guy, Torrey, to be like a solid contributor. Maybe this guy can get you up to like a lot of sacks for sure. Hey, what's up, CarCast, bro? What is up, my dude? Keep on the grind, man. Like I said, the grind never stops. That's what we do. The grind never stops. But defensive end, bro, I think the, the ceiling, bro, the ceiling is off the chain. Like, if you watch some of his game with the Colts, bro, he can, he's he got some good techniques for a defensive end. Yeah, he's a defensive end. He's an edge rusher. One thing I have to do more film study on this guy, because I did play defensive end myself. I did play D-tackle. I played offensive line. Played about everywhere at this this line position. But I'll tell you what. Watching this kid's technique, it gives you some hope that maybe there's something that Chris Kacarek likes about this kid. There's definitely some potential. J Mouse, my guy, what's up, my dude? What is up, everybody? I am in CG's comment. Nah, just playing, bro. I'm just giving. I'm making you famous, bro. You know I'm making you famous. How's it going, my dude? Y'all already know what time is it? It's CG time, you know. Maybe I'm probably going to use that word phrase. You know what time is it? It's CG time. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that should be a, a motto. Like when everybody goes on my stream, I'm going to say, you know what time is it? It's CG time. <laughs> yeah, but speaking of it, man. So the 49ers, looking at the recent update news, we had a couple of wide receivers visit. Marcus Johnson visit. And then we got that other dude, Malik Turner, who visited. I don't know if we signed him yet. But that was recent update news I saw yesterday's news. And then I think yesterday we had some uh, draft prospect visits. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like the phrase, man. It's CG time. Don't ever mess with CG Ruthless. Yeah, I like it. It's CG's time. Don't ever mess with CG Ruthless. Because the Ruthless comes to grind. Like I said, I am the Chris Benoit of the 49ers content creator. I take no for an answer, and I'm going to make you submit because I am the Rabbit Wolverine. Except I don't kill my family. That's the only difference. That's the only difference. But you get my approach, right? <laughs> what is up, Arthur Averney, my favorite Steelers fan? What is up, my dude? Like I said, man, the grind never stops. That's what we do. But speaking of it, man, speaking of it, bro, like, give me your guys' opinion about this guy, bro. Like, I, I never heard too much about him, 
But I think that the fact that he's under the radar is intriguing. Oh, what's up, David? Yeah, what's up, David? Yeah, I don't know. We didn't sign him. I just saw those two players visit, so I'm guessing that we're looking to add depth, but nope, they're just visiting. But yeah, man, everybody knows, bro, that the grind never stops. Maybe I should get a shirt like that one day where it says the grind never stops, and it doesn't stop. It keeps flowing. You know what's even crazy about me behind the scenes, bro? I'm working. I'm putting guesses after guesses, bro. And I'm making it known that I want to make my name, make my mark. And I'm doing things the CG way, bro. Has anybody else promote me besides the BGN Sports Media? You can't think of anybody else. You can't think of anybody else. Some people may criticize the way I do stuff, bro. But that's just the way you do it, man. You know how, they, you know how the old saying, bro? If you don't approach, if you don't show that that instinct, that aggressive approach, bro, you're never going to get what you want. You're never going to get what you want in this in this world, bro. I've always been taught that way, bro. Like, if opportunities knock, are you going to let that shit slip away? Fuck no. You are going to take it. Just like, what, what my, just like my wife. I knew that the moment she was available, she wanted to come at me, but I wanted to make sure it was mine. I make sure it was mine. I don't let nobody take it. What position does he play? Defensive end, bro. Defensive end from the Colts. He's a edge rusher, I believe. He was from Rutgers. I think he was a 2018 third round draft pick from Rutgers. Like their wrist side is it's, it's unbelievable. But looking at it, man, like if we sign him, I'll be okay with this pickup because you do need some depth pieces. And D Ford's going to be cut. He's going to be done. John Lynch already made it pretty clear that. That D Ford's not going to be a part of this team. So that's pretty much the close sign. But yeah, that's the thing, bro. Like, you know, I like that we're looking to get aggressive, but we're not. We're going by debt pieces. Yeah. What current 49ers player would you like to interview? What current 49ers player do I like to interview? Man, that's a really good question. If it were me, I say George Kittle. George Kittle has one of the best personalities, bro. Anytime George Kittle is on an interview, bro, everybody loves that guy. Maybe Debo Samuel. But if I had to pick defense, if I had to pick a defensive player, I definitely like to see what uh I definitely like to interview Fred Warner, bro. Fred Warner or um I'm pretty sure there's different guys with different personality, but Nick Bosa seems like a quiet guy, bro. So I don't know. He seems okay. Exactly, man. Debt pieces and all that, man. But hey, man, the grind never stops. That's the pro. That's the approach we do, bro. But speaking of recent news, dude. So we had some draft prospects that visit the 49ers this coming week. And it looks like to me, and it really looks like to me, I'm going to have this guy as my guest. So I'm going to leave that as an announcement for Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific time. I am going to interview. Uh, Texas Southern University defensive end Michael ba uh, Badajo, whatever his name I don't know how you pronounce it, but he's going to be my guest. So he's a draft prospect from the University of Texas Southern. So he's definitely going to be a guy I'm going to interview in the morning. So 10 a.m. in the morning. Definitely, you guys want to tune in. He's definitely one of the recent visits. So he he definitely kind of like caught the Niners' attention. Six teams are interested of him. So. That's definitely something to look at. Sometimes under the radar players are somebody you definitely don't know about. But he comes from the same college as Michael Strahan did, so that's pretty intriguing. And I think I think during the combine, I think he was clock at 4'8", but then on his pro day, he was clock at 4'5'9 speed. So that's pretty intriguing. Ah, screw Jimmy Ward. I mean, he seems like a nice guy, but I don't know about Jimmy Ward. <laughs> I would never want to... I mean, if he opens up about it, hey, if I had Jimmy Ward on my show, bro, I'm more than open with this guy. I don't want to be a kiss up, but hey, I'll give him his I'll give him his props, bro. He's been consistent, he's been showing durability, so everybody can say that. But man, I'll tell you what, man, that's just the best part about this grind. It's a beautiful feeling, man. It's a beautiful feeling. You got everybody kind of looking at it that way, man. But uh telling you, man. So so Friday. So Friday, I'm going to have a guess, man. 
Friday. I'm going to announce it for you guys so you guys can tune in and, and put it on your notification. Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific time. I'll interview NFL draft prospect. NFL draft prospect. Texas Southern University defensive end. Michael Badahu. Tune in, guys. I am going to put it on my stream right now so you guys can tune in for Friday. It's going to be epic, bro. The grind never stops, bro. I might even freaking, st I might only get four hours of sleep, but I'm going to do it for you guys because that's the way I do my shit, bro. Because the grind never stops. I am going to work hard for y'all. You know, that's the thing. A lot of content creators, bro, we take opportunities. We scratch and claw just to get our opportunities, man. And it's a great opportunity to me, I must say. So you guys want to tune in for Friday, man. Y'all in for a special treat. So this is the guy who just recently visited the 49ers as we speak. So he's a guy from Texas Southern University. I believe he's about six foot three, 250 pound, I think 268 pound defensive end, I believe. And he runs in between the, the four, five, nine speed. So he's kind of somebody we definitely like. But I got to look at more of the film of this guy. Seems like he's kind of intriguing. And he's a very nice guy. I must admit. The moment that I heard about his name pop up on draft visits, I instantly just tagged him on Twitter. And instantly, bro, he responded and shared that he retweeted the thing. And he inboxed me and said, hey, I'm up for it, man. He says, give me a schedule. We'll do it. But hey, that's the feeling, bro. I didn't even think this guy would be interested because, you know, I, I tag everybody. And sometimes I'm lucky and sometimes I'm not, bro. Like Spencer Buford, out of all prospects, bro, who would have thought I had a chance to interview this guy? I didn't think it would happen, but he came in quickly, bro. This guy came in quickly. It only took him maybe about a minute. It took him one minute to respond, and he retweets. That's it. That's how it worked, bro. That's the, that's the crazy part. And then he's asking me, oh, we'll figure out something. Oh, Friday would work. Yeah, let's do it. And he said, that sounds good. That dude seems like a nice guy. And then that's the cool part, man. That's the part of what I like, bro. The best part about this content, bro, is I've always wanted to have an opportunity to talk to prospects and get their uh, get their perspective of what it's like to have that journey to play in the NFL, bro. A lot of them players, bro, they had their dreams, bro. Their dreams were to play in the NFL. And the the crazy part about these stories, bro, is Spencer Buford just said it like like it was in his destiny, bro. It was in his destiny since he was three years old. I think since he was three years old, bro, or three or four years old, this guy was destined to play football, bro. Even when people thought he was too young, this guy played this game, bro. That's intriguing story, and it comes in his family bloodline, bro. You you definitely can you can definitely appreciate their football journeys. That's what I like about these players, bro. They come a long ways. Spencer Buford, whoever drafts this kid, bro, they're going to get themselves a freaking baller, bro. This guy is going to block. This guy is going to consistently be a good run blocker for any other team. But speaking of Michael Vihu, dude, I believe there's going to be some team that takes a flyer and makes the most out of this guy. If anybody else can turn potential into something good, bro, it is going to be Chris Kosarek, bro. I believe that this Michael Vihu... I don't know how you pronounce it right, but I think that coming from a small school and a guy like Chris Casera can develop this kid, bro, it's going to come a long ways. What's up, Crazy Juice? What's up, my guy? I tell you what, man, that's the best feeling in the world. It sure is, bro. That's the best feeling, bro. Best freaking feeling. And let me give you guys some upcoming update news that's coming up on the, sh on the channel. So, we got the return of the rump. The return of the rump on April 20th, man. The return of the rump. I just wanted to make it sound like the return of the Mac. The return of the rump. April. April 20th. April 20th, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Mike Rump is going to make his return, dude. That's going to be awesome, bro. 
this guy, he's a good friend of mine behind the scenes, bro. We talk every now and then. We don't talk like close like everybody else, bro. But even when I called this guy, he knew my name right off the bat. That's how that's how knowledgeable this guy is. He's a cool dude. So the return of the rub is on April 20th, 6 p.m. Pacific time. And we're in the process, bro. We're in the process to have uh let's see. So my upcoming guesses. So tonight, today, I am going to collaborate with um, with Fortnite Street Squad. Today, Fortnite Street Squad tonight. So that will be like in about an hour or so. I'm going to have them as my guests. Fortnite Street Squad, bro. If you guys haven't checked out their channel, bro, go check out the channel. I am going today, Fortnite Street Squad, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Check the check the stream. It's Pacific time. I'm just only here to just kill a little extra time just to get my audience a little bit here and there. So today, Fortnite Street Squad is today. So you guys definitely need to tune in. And that's what's gonna happen, guys. Today, I am going to collaborate with with my guy, Chili 49er, bro. The guy's cool, bro. He's you're gonna like this guy. He's got a channel with a, with a couple of his guys, bro. They're they're pretty they're pretty chill back, bro. If Jimmy G came to you and asked you to be on your show, would you say yes or no? <laughs> I, I would say yes. Why not, bro? Because you know why I would say yes to have him on the show? Because a lot of the 49er audience will come into my channel and talk shit about him, bro. They would ask questions, bro. And I have the, the notoriety to get this guy on my show, bro. Why not, bro? It's always a pleasure to have somebody like Jimmy G on the show, bro. Everybody, Everybody's talking about him, so if I get him on my show, bro, there's no way in hell I'm going to say no to him. I'm going to say, bro, the floor is yours. I'll ask you any questions. Don't get mad if a bunch of Fortnite fans are going to ask you some crazy questions or say some dumb shit about you. Just take the heat like a champ. That's about it. But, hey, I am going to have Fortnite Street Squad, bro. And it's going to be coming up tonight, bro. So, you guys definitely go check out the channel. It's called Fortnite Street Squad. Uh, the dude, Chili Chili Niner, bro. Very good dude. Very nice guy. Very good dude. If you guys haven't checked out the channel, bro, it's very much uh, it's pretty much a good fan channel, bro. Like he's he he's been on John Chapman's channel, or they've been on each other's channel, and he's a very good dude. Comes from the same cloth I come from, bro. I come from San Jose myself, but I come from the South Side before, so that's the best feeling, bro. You get a lot of these other fans, bro, that come from the same city, bro, same claw. So that's the guests I'm going to come up with. So the return of the rump. We're going to get the return of the rump, bro. But, hey, I am going to tell you guys that, man. I just need to let you guys know about that. So I am going to put please welcome. Please welcome 49 Street. Squad. Chili 49. See, I want to put that as his name because that's what he goes by on his channel. Like if you look at his is a uh, channel where he has like a couple like two or three of his guys, that's that's what he goes by, Chili 49er. Yep, I'm gonna put that as an introduction. Good thing I'm actually getting ahead of the game a little bit. But the best part is, bro, I'm spending more time with all my fans, bro, getting a chance to see what they got to say. And I'll tell you what, Corey. I'm pretty sure that David will... Do you know the best part about having Jimmy Garoppolo is David can say a lot of shit about him, bro. I want to see David talk hella shit about Jimmy, bro. The fact that if I had Jimmy Garoppolo on the show, bro, is I'm going to have David say some say some stuff, to Jimmy, and he's going to he's going to he's going to have he's going to enjoy me fucking reading his comments and telling him how he feels about Jimmy trading him for an eight round pick when there's no eight round picks at all. That's the best part, man. That's the best feeling. I'm telling you guys, it is. CG, you should check out D'Angelo Malone from Western Kentucky. He played defense in, but it it says he's a outside linebacker. I've checked him out. I've watched a couple of his highlights, bro. Great, yeah. 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. That's what I said, bro. If I can get Jimmy on the show, bro, I know you want to fucking bash him. I know you want to fucking put him in your place. That's what I like about it, bro. Getting you to fucking bash him would be fun. Uh, Yeah, dude, D'Angelo uh, Malone, bro, I like his upside. He definitely can play outside also, so he's kind of like a tweener, bro. I like his upside. I watched a couple of his highlights. It stands out more. But um, that's a guy I do like. Hey, check out this guy from Nebraska, this Torre guy. He seems decent. Anybody would like the opportunity to bash Jimmy, bro. That's the beauty. That's the beauty, bro. That's the beauty. That's the beauty part, man. And then, uh, let's see. Upcoming guesses are coming up pretty soon. Nah, come on. Don't you all agree, bro? Don't you guys all agree that when if I had Jimmy on the show, bro, if all you Jimmy haters were on the comments, bro, I would give you guys the I would give you guys the opportunity to fucking ask questions about him, man. You can ask the dumbest questions. You can tell him how many freaking chicks that he slept with after uh, that that porn star chick, or you can say why do you think why you why you why you think I mean why you care about how you look on the field? <laughs> that could be a funny question, but you get what I'm saying. That's the beauty part, man. That's the beauty. That's the beauty of what people get, man. I'm telling you. It's the best part. You can really look at it that way. Yep. So 5 p.m. Pacific time. 49 Street Squad. 49. I mean, Chili 49 is coming in the building. Y'all going to like this guy, bro. This guy's cool as fuck. I'll tell you what, man. That dude's going to. Hey, I'm telling you guys, once you guys check out the Fortnite Street Squad, you guys are going to fucking like these guys. They're, they're cool. They're like the kind of guys that, you know, I'll kick it with, bro. They come at the tailgate, bro. They're one of those dudes I've seen at tailgates at times. They're some cool dudes. I think they represent the Santa Clara uh, chapter, but they seem like cool dudes. Usually when you see those Santa Clara chapters, bro, they're usually around there. I think I've seen them around. But, uh, man, that's the beautiful part, man. Like they say, the grind never stops, bro. The grind never stops. Five people in the building, that is what's up. It was going up to eight and six people, bro, at once. That's cool. Dude, I'm telling you, man, I love questions, but, you know, it's up to y'all. I'll keep you guys updated if we do sign a Torrey from the Colts, bro. He is a free agent, so I don't know if his market value is low now because no team has signed him yet. So maybe you might get him on a bargain because he played limited snaps. Maybe there's potential that you take a chance on. And why not come to the Niners? Chris Casera can make you into a stud, bro. You just had five and a half sacks with the Colts last year. Can you imagine with proper coaching by Casera, bro? You might have potential to get 10 or 12 sacks, bro. Uh, Corey, I personally don't give a shit who I interview, bro. Why would I say no to any of them? Like, if you get a chance to interview any other draft prospect or any other um, player on the 49ers, bro, I don't care if it's the team. I, I don't care if it's the player I can't stand. The fact that I get some people to come into the comments, bro. If I had to choose one, okay, Dante Johnson would be a fucking hell no, but I'll still get him on the show. So I'll say Dante Johnson for once. Dante Johnson would be like a no for me, but you know what? If a lot of you guys want me to bring him on and you guys want to talk shit about him, I don't give a damn on the comments, bro. You can ask him any other damn questions. Just be respectful. That's all I ask. But that's pretty much the only one I probably would say no to. But I'll still give him a chance. I'll give him an opportunity. Maybe he does seem like a nice guy beyond the scenes. So maybe that's a guy that I probably would say no, but I probably wouldn't pass on. I would ask him why did his agent... Oh, uh, yeah, that would be crazy. Yeah, every time we lose, Jimmy G won't take blame for the mistakes. And we, we, we in the press conference, what's this? We shit? Is this the first thing I would ask? I don't know. Yeah, let's see. 
The only one I probably wouldn't want to put on my show is fucking uh, Tom Compton. Fuck that guy. But he'd probably be good clout for me, bro. He'd probably be a good guest to have because pe- that a lot of you guys can say how much that guy sucks. So I would say Tom Compton, Dante Johnson. But I would never ban him for my channel. I'll never ban him on interviews. It's pretty much good for my channel to have him, even if I don't like him. So you gotta look. You gotta think about it in the positive side, bro. Like, even if you don't like him as players, it builds your channel with other audience to fucking say shit about him. So if I don't like Dante Johnson, but I, I but I know a lot of people who don't like him, and they're gonna come into the comments and talk some shit about him, bro. That's good for me. But questions, that's good for me. It, it, if if people don't like Tom Compton or whatever reason, and I have a chance to get him on the show and I get to say some shit about him, hey, it is what it is, but I'm probably not going to do that. But those are probably one of the guys I probably wouldn't consider putting on my show. Yeah, those are good questions. Having Jimmy G would be like, dude, having Jimmy Garoppolo on my channel, bro, you get like thousands and thousands of 49er fans either on his side or either fucking piss at him. You get one of those people. That's the best Billy. If I had guys like that, bro, I would have the same amount of views just like Grant Cohn does. The same amount of views as Rumble. I would have the same amount of views as anybody else if I had those guests. But you know what? I don't. I just work on me. I focus on doing what's best for CG. I'm just grateful to have at least five of you guys you know it's better than having fucking a hundred fake ass motherfuckers i'd rather have five realist motherfuckers than have some hundred fucking fakers some of you guys have hundreds of people who watch you but sometimes hundreds of hundreds of people who watch you they either just roll with you because a certain somebody you know it, it's just how it goes bro i'm cool with the realist bro if i can if i can establish 50 realist fans at the stream, bro, then I'm accomplishing something on a daily, bro, but it's okay with five, bro. It's a start. Sometimes the grind gets into a struggle, and then people start to appreciate it at some point. So you look at it that way. But yeah. D'Angelo Malone, bro, I'm probably going to have to tag him on Twitter and see what's up with him. Maybe I'll get him on the show. I'm going to see if I can get that due on my show maybe by the following weeks. But if anybody else has any more questions or anybody wants to decide to throw in some Super Chat, it's up to you guys. But I am going to have my guests on by tonight at 5 p.m. So definitely tune in. You guys are not going to want to miss it. And if you guys didn't subscribe to their channel, bro, it's going to be under the description on the interview that I'm going to have with uh, Chili 49ers. So definitely go check them out, bro. They're good people. I suggest you guys go check them out. They're, they're very good people. They're very laid back, very chill. They they know their fucking football stuff. They're very good people. I've seen them on tailgates, bro. They're very cool dudes. They're very respectful. They're very much old school type fans, bro. They know their stuff. So they definitely are somebody you guys can interact with. Like if you ever guys go to a game, you probably will see them at tailgates, bro. That's how you would meet up with them. They're right down the tailgates around Levi's. I don't know if I remember meeting up with them, but I think I've seen a couple of them. All right, guys, it looks like the stream's about to end in a bit. But I'll keep you guys more updated. I am going to have my guests on in a little bit. So, as always, CG Ruthless Sports is out, and you already know. You already know.